Hi everyone, this one is something absolutely fantastic. It's a risk assessment and if you work in risk or around risk or in projects or even in a business that needs to measure risk, this is absolute gold and it's the best risk template that I have ever come across and I use on a daily basis. There's a lot of different parts to this risk assessment and we're going to go through all of them to create it for yourself if you want to. But long story short, as part of any risk and risk assessment, you've got your risk descriptions, you've got your uh, what's their, what are they caused by and what are the consequences of them and who owns that risk. But then then most importantly, we've got the probability and impact. And for any risk, we want to multiply the probability by the impact. And that will give us our risk rating. So this particular sheet actually does that automatically for us. And what we do as an example is if we select from a dropdown, uh, maybe it's a medium probability or, and you know, this could be a percentage as well and you can change it and we'll show you how to change it as well. But let's say the impact when it happens is, uh, is really low, very low, then actually it changes our risk rating to be sustainable. And it's all based on the risk matrix, which we're going to create as well. Just quickly, we've got the controls and the control owner. So how are we mitigating these risks? What are our controls around these risks? And then what's the residual risk? What is the leftover risk? Uh, once we've put those controls in place. So have we, in, have we made our risk a lot better? And uh, you know, if it's sustainable, then maybe it's gonna be sustainable again. Hopefully the risk doesn't get worse. That would be a bad thing. <laughs> um, but the way we manage this particular sheet as well is with this beautiful risk matrix. So again, you can change this to be a percentage. For example, low might be 20%, 40%, 60%, 80 or 100% probability of happening, for example, but I find these, these names work really well, at least in the real world. Everyone understands that. Uh, and so same with the impact. Is it a low impact? Is it a high impact? Uh, but the best part about this is it shows us on this beautiful chart here how many sustainable risks we have, how many moderate risks we have. See these moderate risks? Uh, and we've currently got three um, before our controls. And we've even got one severe and it counts them all up for us just based on what we've done on our risk assessment over here. So, I mean, how cool is that? So it shows us exactly at a glance what we've got. And as you can see, there's our critical or our, uh, our critical risk there. Sorry, that's the severe one. And if we just have a look, have we got, yep, there is our severe one. And we can see exactly why it's severe. It's because it's got a high impact if it happens. So all of that to say, let's get into this sheet. I'll show you how to create it. There's definitely a lot to get into and you can create your own, but I truly believe this is the absolute best risk assessment that you will ever find. Let's get into it. Now, of course, like everything, every time we start, I'll just do the general framing and coloring and we might speed that up ever so slightly so that we can get into the good stuff of creating first the risk matrix and then our risk assessment. Uh, but let's do all of this shading and framing and coloring first of all, then we can do the formulas and that's the really good stuff that we really truly want to see. Now the items up the top, we're just going to go through, first of all we want our unique ID, uh, next we want our risk description and we want all of these to, uh, to be formatted nicely. So let's wrap that text around and we'll put them in the center. We want our caused by and consequences. We want our risk owners, the name and role. Now we want our probability and we want our impact, which will give us our risk rating. And all of this without our controls is our inherent risk, the, the starting risk. Next, we want the controls that we're going to be putting in place. So what are the mitigants? How are we mitigating these risks? What are we doing about them basically? And of course, the control owners, name and role as well. Lastly, we want our residual probability uh, impact and risk rating. This is residual meaning left over. So, you know, what's left over once we have put our controls in place. Now we've got the bare bones for our, uh, for our sheet and we can put in all of the details here. Now, before we go any further, what we actually have to do is start creating our risk matrix over to the right hand side. And on this risk matrix, we're going to put all of the probability scales. So low, uh, you know, medium, high, very high. Uh, and we're going to match that against the critical risks and or the sustainable risks, for example. 
And the reason we need to do that is because we're actually going to use these two, these two tables that we create here to feed into everything else we do. So a lot of it is automated as part of our risk assessment. This is the really good stuff when we're creating our risk assessment. For our probability, let's merge this one. We'll say probability. But when we format this cell, we actually want the alignment. Let's change that alignment and just make it 90 degrees. And now when we put this in the center and make it a little bit larger, now that looks really nice. Let's add the rest of our borders, uh, internal borders here. Now that's looking really good. Now we're going to see exactly why we needed to select this, this chart first. By making these equal the same levels on this particular chart, all we have to do in the future, if we want to change anything on this sheet, is to change uh, the, the labels on this particular section over to the right hand side. That will feed into everything. And that just makes it easier for us if we do want to change those levels later on. We're going to do the same thing for our probability as well. And then we can cheat a little bit by copying down just the formulas and Excel will do the rest of us because it will just go from top to bottom there because we're going from top to bottom here as well. So that makes it a little bit easier. Now initially, for this initial risk matrix, uh, we're actually uh, making these, uh, these items ourselves. So we've got our moderate sections and this is where they all fit. So this is a great way to do it. You may have your own way to do it and that's fine. Really, uh, if we've got very low and low and then the probability of happening is also low, then these are sustainable risks. Uh, if we've got probability of happening you know, low to medium, but the impact is getting higher. So higher impact up the top here. Then we've got moderate, we start to get into severe risks. And lastly, we start to get into critical risks that absolutely need controls or need to be managed. Now that we've got this set up, we can actually go back to our risk assessment and we can start putting in the, um, some of these things for our probability and impact and adding the risk rating automatically. First of all, what we're going to do is go to our probability column, select the whole thing, go to data, and what we want to do is actually, uh, we want data validation here. So there it is, data validation, and we want to use a list. Now keep in mind this is for our probability. So we want to go to the source, go across here, and where do we want to select this from? From our master list. How good is this? See, it's starting to work already. So for probability, we want to select all of these, uh, either drag down or hold shift from top to bottom. And as you can see, it appears in our data list here. If we select OK and go back, now we are able to select from high, very high, medium, uh, low or very low. And it's the same for any of these. Uh, so this starts to be really, really powerful. We'll just format that in the way that we want. And now we want to do the same for our impact as well. Data validation, selecting the list, going to our source, scrolling over and using the impact section here so that this is now the list that we get to choose from. Everything is connected. Again, let's format that in the way that we want. And now it's time for us to put in our risk rating. Now for our risk rating, we're going to use a nice little Excel trick. And that Excel trick is index and match one of the great things to use within Excel. And so what we're going to say is for the index, what we're looking for is, see in blue here, so all of these different items. So we're looking for the return, we're indexing all of these items from moderate to severe to critical, and that's what we're going to return, but only if it matches a certain criteria. And the criteria we're looking for is the match of F6, so the probability of high, and we want to find that in our probability column over here. And then our match of medium, you know, or, or impact, sorry, of G6, our green one here. And we want that to match the impact column over here. So when it matches that, then it will return the appropriate um, item in that matrix. And if we select, we'll just get rid of the bit on the end there, that will come a little bit later. But if we select enter, and if we say enter there, now this is automatically returned severe. So we've got probability of high, impact of medium, so probability of high, impact of medium, and that is a severe risk, and it's returned a severe risk. It's exactly what we wanted. Now really quickly, if we copy this down, you'll see that it actually gives us an error. And so we just wanna use another final little trick, and that is say, if error, open our bracket, we'll let this formula run, and then at the end of it, 
value if error, if, if it is an error, we just want blank quotes. So we want the cell to be blank. Now, if we select that again, and now if we uh, can copy that and right click and control, uh, get, copy the formulas, the formulas will just copy and leave our formatting intact. And now you can see that error disappears. Now, of course, for these particular risk ratings, we actually want to color them the way we want. So we want them to be colored the same as what we have here. Uh, but all we do there is to use conditional formatting. So in, in home, conditional formatting, we would say a new rule. And basically we'd say format only cells that contain specific text. And if it's severe, for example, then we format that. And the severe one has a fill, has like that, that orangey fill maybe Maybe it's a bit, uh, bit darker orange. So I think we have that, and then that'll change automatically, but only if, uh, if it is severe. If it's a different one and we haven't set it up, then it doesn't format. So let's go ahead and format all of the different colors for our risk ratings, just using conditional formatting. Once you've done all of that, if we go to manage rules, you'll see them all there. You'll have ones that are sustainable and green, uh, that are moderate and are yellow, critical that are red and severe that are, you know, a dark orange. Now, of course, we want to do the same trick for our residual risks. And all we do is the same thing using the same table all the way over here, nice and easy. But once we've done that, we're going to start delving into counting those risks and seeing that on the risk matrix, how many of each particular risk we have on a one pager, which is just so incredible and it's really, really valuable. Isn't that cool? Now we're making some really good progress. Now all we need to do is create these extra uh, risk matrices. So for our residual risks and counting those up and our uh, inherent risks and counting those up as well. First of all, let's make sure that these particular items just have dollar signs next to the numbers so that they don't move when we copy them down. This is gonna be really important and it's just gonna make our life a little bit easier. Now when we select this and control C and control V, now this will, uh, will still remain exactly the same and it'll be referencing exactly what we want over here. Now, of course, we don't need these items or these names in here, but we do still want to keep the color. So that's a perfect thing that the color has covered, come across as well. Now for this particular section, we're going to use another Excel trick. And this one is very, very cool. And it uses the count ifs function. And what we're saying is count if, so we've got uh, this cr criteria, our probability matches X3, so very high. <laughs> And uh, if our impact matches this one over here, which is very low, so we've got very high and very low. So if it matches these, then what we actually want to do is, uh, or if it doesn't, so if it equals zero, then we just want to return nothing. So we want a blank cell. But if it does, then we want to count those up. So we're counting up the number of those items that match that item and the number of items that match that item. And that will return an actual number of how many of those risks we have. And that is the absolute beauty of Excel and how we can create this and start creating this automatically. Now the rest of this is just filling out in exactly the same way the countifs function across all of these cells. And there are a few di different tricks that we can use. For example, these dollar signs, uh, when we use, when we copy these across and have a dollar sign, we want some of them to move, but some of them not to move. And so as we're copying across, just be mindful of that. Then when we copy that, and if we select all of these, and if we use our copy formulas only and copy those across, now all we have to do is just adjust this ever so slightly. So what we're going to do here is, uh, as you can see in our second one, we want low and very high. So impact to be low, that just comes across here, comes up. There we go. In our next one, we want our impact to be medium. In our next one, we want our impact to be high. And in our last one, we want our impact to be very high. Now that we've done this, you'll notice that we've left the three without a dollar sign. And we've done that because we actually want that to move when we copy these all the way down. So let's see if this works. We've got our top row. We will copy this and we will select the rest and select paste formulas. And now, as you can see, we've got two risks on our board up here and it's counting those two risks for us. 
How cool is that? We've got one medium and another, another moderate. So one severe and one moderate. And that's our inherent risk. If we add more risks on our chart, it'll count more risks on our other chart. As you can see, filling out those extra ones, and now it's counting them for us. This is so great. Now all we have to do is use the exact same method for our, risk, our residual risks. Except in our formula, we want it to be over here in the, in the residual risk and the, and the residual probability and the residual impact. So when we're selecting our ranges uh, for our count if function, we just want them to be over here instead of the inherent risk ones over there. And as you can see, it counts them up and we've currently got two noted there, two noted here, and there they are counted up our residual risk after our controls are put in place. So all in all, there we go. It's an amazing thing that we've created together. And of course you can fill it out in more detail as you see fit, or even add rows and add columns uh, down here to suit yourself. But this is something that you can take and use straight away in your own line of work whenever risk is involved. And I hope you take it and create something great. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.